Time to roll, baby. Time to roll. All that matters is you go out and play every game like it's your last. I think it's the greatest story in sports. Let's go, baby. Knock out Mike Tyson style. This guy is just a true, amazing athlete. Oh, he is a tough son of a gun, a very tough son of a gun. You just saw it in his eyes that, you know, he had a never-say-die attitude. Iverson to the floor, to the hoop. Yeah! Oh, yes! He is the man! And Allen had to grow up in a hurry. He was the man of the house uh, at age 12. You don't know this man. When he speaks, he speaks of his heart and his soul. You may not like what you hear, but he's telling you the truth. Pulls up in the paint. Too strong! Oh, no! Well, you can see the growth, you can see the development, you can see not a different person, but a guy who has moved from one level of his life to another. A lot of people felt like I couldn't reach this point. People talked about my size, my game, that I was selfish, and I couldn't make it here with the guys that I'm playing with. So, you know, it makes the story that much better at the end. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to game one of the NBA Finals. This one could be for the ages. The Los Angeles Lakers could become the first team in history to run the table in the playoffs. They have already dismantled Portland, Sacramento, and San Antonio, and now they come in a prohibitive favorite against Philadelphia. It's Whoa, all over tonight! Billy Cheesecake! Billy Cheesecake! All over, baby. Iverson, he, oh, he might get a couple points, but that's it! It's Allen Iverson and Shaq. Truly a David and Goliath story. Let's get dirty! Let's get dirty! As the 2001 NBA Finals opened, the idea that the Philadelphia 76ers, led by six foot, 160 pound Allen Iverson, could defeat the defending champion LA Lakers and their seven foot one, 330 pound superstar Shaquille O'Neal seemed absurd. Who can stop the Giants? The Lakers had gone undefeated during the playoffs, and in game one, they took an early 13 point lead on Philly and looked ready to knock them out. Just calm down, guys. All the shit is there. All it's on them. They're supposed to win. We ain't even supposed to be here. Iverson and his Sixers may have been down, but they weren't out. In fact, they had the Lakers right where they wanted them. What an incredible shot by Iverson. The Philly comeback, like Iverson, would be relentless. We got to pressure their ass up the floor. Allen, on missed shots, get your hands on the ball. These two guys will run their ass off, right? Throughout the playoffs, Iverson had willed his team to victory, and he wasn't ready to stop now. Court skip is picked off by Iverson. Down the floor he goes against O'Neal. Allen by the big man, scoop by him. It's good. A foot race, the tortoise and the hare. Steal by Iverson. Back on Bryant. Easy layup. He is But casting a shadow over the hopes of the Sixers was O'Neal. Shaq, oh, slam over the top of a tumble. And Shaq powered the game into overtime. Take a deep breath and understand we got five minutes to get one up on you. Right? Five minutes. But once overtime started, the Lakers seemed to have order restored. They had the momentum, the crowd, O'Neal and the lead. But Philly had the answer. One thing about Iverson is no quit in him. You just know he's got a couple of bullets left in his holster. You just know he's coming at him. Here's Allen Iverson outside the arc. He tees up a three. It's good. He drilled it. A three by Allen Iverson. One minute to go in overtime. What a comeback here. The Lakers had the Sixers on the ropes. They come fighting out of the corner. Here's Iverson. Lose a defender. 
stays right with him. Allen wants to go. Wants the baseline. He fires two ball. Got it again. He's way too good. He steps around Lou and drilled it. Seven straight points by Ivers. It looked like he was dead in the water. Sixers shock the world with a game one victory here over the world champion Los Angeles Lakers. The irrepressible Allen Iverson. You cannot kill that guy. They can put the brooms away. That's one, baby. That's right. We ain't do that yet. We got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. They can put the brooms up, though. Ain't gonna do none of that. As long as you leave everything out on the basketball court, I mean, you can go in the locker room and look at the mirror in the mirror and feel good about yourself, and that's important. But when you don't leave it all out there, then you know, kind of feel like, you know, you as a person, kind of, you know, kind of suspect. Allen Iverson was raised in Hampton, Virginia. In 1975, the newborn Allen and his 15-year-old mother, Anne, moved into his grandmother's house, located, ironically, on Jordan Drive. And from the moment she saw him, Anne knew her son's destiny. In the hospital room, they bring this long, 22-inch long child whose arms past his kneecaps. And so I said, oh my goodness, I got me a ball player. But it would be football that captivated Allen at first. It appeared to me he had this insatiable desire to just win at, at, at all costs. You know, he wanted to win every game. He wanted to catch every pass. You know, he wanted to make sure that his team won. I came home one day, and my mom said, uh, you know, today you're going to basketball practice. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to basketball practice. I don't play basketball. I play football and baseball. And um, you know, I told her I thought basketball was soft. And she said, well, your coach is on his way. He's coming to pick you up, and you're going. I cried all the way out the door. Go to the band. You can see early on that he had a lot of heart, a big bundle of heart. It's always been like that. This guy's 10 years old. But his skill level was so high that he was probably playing on the level of a 16, 17-year-old kid at 10. He was doing things that 10-year-old kids don't do. i never forget this. He said, uh, I can take MJ. I said, well, I, we thought he meant one of the players that we'd give me to play. He said, I can take MJ. And the, you know, the coaches and everybody else just said, he said, I can take Michael Jordan. I mean, he said it in a believable way that made you believe he could take Michael Jordan. Sports would become Allen's refuge from the hardships he faced at home. Allen had to grow up in a hurry, from growing up on the streets, from moving from apartment to apartment, to housing project to housing project, to watching his mom struggle to make ends meet. Uh, to having to take care of his younger sisters when his mom wasn't around. He was the man of the house uh, at age 12. But the one constant Alan could always rely on was his mother. You know, I remember one time we went on an AAU tournament when I was 13, and um, we didn't have no lights on in the house because she spent the, um, the money for the light bill on my sneakers. I always looked up to my mom, like she was the one that told me I could be anything that I wanted to be. You know, I believed it. At Bethel High School, Allen blossomed into a two-sport star, a sensation from the hardwood to the gridiron. Trailing 7-0 at the 15-yard line. Iverson moves to the inside. He's got the cover quickly. He may go. This is what happens. Allen Iverson has just returned the kickoff. The man can beat you so many different ways. Somebody ought to map out his DNA. There's, there's a gene in there. It says, don't lose. Beat on the right side for Pringle. And Pringle, the good hustle by Iverson. Boy, he's fast. Iverson will take it in and lay it in. He always kept you on the edge of your seat because you, you're just waiting for something new to happen. Allen's junior year would prove to be a revelation. 
Iverson wants to pass, has some time, steps up and then throws, and Terrell has got it. When it got to crunch time, Allen was the guy that said, all right, guys, I know you're looking to me to do it, and I'm going to do it. And he rose to that occasion. High snap. Allen led Allen Bethel to the Virginia State Championship. Drives Iverson back. Iverson will take it on the one hop, trying to get a block on the sideline. He does. He's down the sideline looking for one block. He may go. He will. Oh. to say that as a junior to come and win a state championship, it's got to feel pretty good. I'm going to go get one in basketball now, that's all. Okay. Look out, A few months later, Allen did just that. It's over! It's over! We got time, man. But we played hard. We wanted this, man. First one. Feel good. Two states in a row. Allen Iverson. What can you say? Just watch the film. Allen was named Virginia's football and basketball player of the year, but his life was about to change forever. The fight in a local bowling alley landed Allen in a far different court. I think that night I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I want, you know, I want people to know that that was, that was the case, not that I'm, I'm no type of bad guy. Shockingly, Allen was convicted and sent to prison. He wasn't even allowed to play basketball. He never played his senior year in high school. He never played football. They took something away from him that he enjoyed, that he liked. Instead of being down on myself, I had to somehow um, get out of there and try to start all over. All I wanted and asked for from God was a second chance. Allen, his family, and his friends had maintained that he was innocent. And Virginia's governor agreed and overturned his conviction. After four months, Iverson returned home. But because of the negative publicity, colleges were reluctant to recruit him. Ultimately, a desperate Ann Iverson sought out the legendary tough love coach of Georgetown University. Ann Iverson was the reason. She's the one who pricked my curiosity. There's no way if Ann Iverson hadn't, she cried, she did indicate the fact that, you know, she was pleading for her son's life. When I sit down and talk with him, the very first thing that I realize is that he was smart. He seems to have dealt with what has happened behind him, and that's, that, that was important for me. I was impressed, and I, when I got finished, you know, I said, hey, you know, let's go for this. Iverson would reward Thompson's faith by playing his heart out for him. But it seemed that while Allen could avoid defenders, he couldn't escape his reputation. I heard some maliciously mean things said about him. I've never heard him complain about it. He's got too much pride and intelligence for that, and I, I respect that in him. But people always still stereotype me, always felt like I was some type of bad guy because of, you know, what, what happened to me. But I think Coach Thompson did a great job of um, keeping those people away from me. After a sophomore season, in which he was named first team All-American, Iverson tried to break from his past and take a giant leap into his future. After carefully wearing my options with Coach Thompson and my family, I decided to enter the NBA draft. Um, I definitely plan to further my education, but my family needs to um, needs to be addressed right now. Most of all, I'd like to thank my mom for sticking with me through thick and thin. I mean, she's always did that for me, um, no matter what. And uh, my, my immediate family requires me to leave Georgetown, but um, I will always be a part of the Georgetown family. Thank you. The second pick goes to the Toronto Raptors. And that means that the first pick in the 1996 NBA draft goes to the Philadelphia 76ers. When I won that lottery, I think I went ballistic because I knew 
Allen Iverson was our pick. Yeah, Phil, yeah! <laughs> this is it, it starts it off. This was not just a lottery, this was the Allen Iverson lottery. Because in my eyes, in my estimation, Iverson was the man. After having suffered his share of nightmares, Allen Iverson was about to live out the fantasy of every kid who ever picked up a basketball. I had uh, butterflies so bad, you know, I remember just sitting there. I knew they were gonna call my name, but I didn't know. You know, once they did, I just, I just felt good. With the first pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Allen Iverson from Georgetown University. And there you see backstage Allen Iverson, the Georgetown sophomore. Ann and Steve, mom and dad. Family and friends back there. And what a tremendous moment that is for a kid dreaming of this night, of being the first pick in the NBA draft. And it has happened for Allen Iverson. After everything that I've been through, you know, I finally made it to the, you know, the point that I really wanted to get to. It was like a, a tribute to all the people that helped me get there. It was just a great feeling. I felt like my life was starting to amount to something. It was just a huge climax for all of the life struggles that, 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 that he had um, been through. You know, I've been through a lot of obstacles in my life, and uh, you know, I'm just happy I overcame them. Now it's just time. So I'm getting the NBA, walk that straight path. He was the number one pick in the 1996 NBA draft. A six foot guard out of Georgia. Number three, put up a counter for Allen Iverson. Yeah, scratch. Iverson would hit the court running. Iverson all the way, yes! Raw lightning. Iverson, this is going to be something with Stackhouse. He slammed for two. You are helpless when AI has it going on. Yes, Iverson, yes! The kid is coming up big, brings his crown into a frenzy. What a shot. I knew that once I got an opportunity that I was going to showcase my God-given ability. I just felt like the sky was the limit. With the odds that he had already overcome, he wasn't going to let the game stop him. Iverson picked his pocket. At least once a game, this guy will do something that makes you just fall out of your seat. Shot by Allen Iverson. <laughs> Iverson determined to make it happen. Oh my goodness! I don't believe what I just saw! Imagine some of Michael Jordan's best moves. Now, speed it up a little. Put that 45 on a 33 RPM. Boom! I mean, that's Allen Iverson. Iverson accelerates, putting the speed on! He doesn't move like anything we know. He just, it's quicker. Allen's quickness would be best showcased by his most lethal move, a crossover. Trying to guard this guy is like trying to hold water in the palm of your hand. Let's see what Anthony does. Forget about it. Iverson for two. Iverson crosses over against Brown, gets two, and they ooh and ah here. Iverson didn't play like a rookie and didn't act like one either. It's time to get down. There was a fearlessness in his approach to the game. A lot of guys, when you see guys that you kind of looked up to, um, you kind of, they kind of shy away from the challenge. And I just took it on. As a kid, Allen had bragged to his coach about taking MJ. And now, he'd finally get his chance. When I grabbed the ball, I heard Phil Jackson yell, Michael. Michael. Iverson has Jordan. The crowd is into it. I gave him a little cross to see what he bite on it. I let him set his feet, and then I stepped it back again. Allen shakes free, gets two! Mike said no! Allen said yes! The bucket, the crowd loves it! 
I wanted the opportunity to play against the top guys and to go after them. Allen would finish sixth in the league in scoring. All year long, he'd make people take notice of him. And then, as the season drew to a close, he'd make history. Yes, and there it is! Allen Iverson, four straight with 40 or more, breaking the Wilt Chamberlain standard that had stood for 37 years. Simply, simply amazing. What a week. What a week. Iverson had taken his rookie season and made it into one big scrapbook. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Philadelphia 76ers to present our rookie, Allen Iverson, with the Schick NBA Rookie of the Year Award. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> now the world knows what we in Philadelphia have known, that Allen Iverson is one of the most exciting, most dynamic, most fearless players in the NBA. Despite his personal accomplishments during his rookie season, Allen was still having trouble with his image. Some thought he was a selfish player. It was probably best summed up by Charles Barkley, who said, it's me, myself, and Iverson. And that's the way he was perceived, and, and not necessarily wrongly so. Even his most memorable moment as a rookie would ultimately put him in a bad light. He challenged Michael Jordan to the effect, in the first game they played, he said, I'm not afraid of Michael Jordan, I can play anybody. And in effect, it was interpreted as how dare he challenge Michael Jordan. And who is Allen Iverson to say he could play him? And Michael was offended, and when Michael was offended, America was offended. When the incident happened with Michael, you know, that's when everything went downhill. You know, people were saying, oh, he can talk trash to Jordan, who he think he is. Everybody just started to bash me, and it never ended. My impressions of Ireland before I came here was a guy that I really didn't want to, you know, be on the same team with. I didn't know him personally. I just heard so many bad things about him. And to make matters worse, Allen had not made the Sixers a better team. Philly had won only 22 games. And so in the summer of 1997, they went searching for some direction. I feel great in introducing to you the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, Larry Brown. Yeah! <laughs> Larry Brown embodied basketball tradition. A clash with Allen seemed inevitable. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that they're from two different worlds. The 60-year-old with a reputation as a fixer-upper coach and the young hip-hop star who wants to do it his way. And it was like when worlds collide. Brown wanted Iverson to play within the team. Iverson wanted to be the team. When I started coaching, I thought he was a great athlete, just doesn't know how to play. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know if he'd ever know how to play. But despite their differences, Brown was intrigued. He competed on the court, and I, I knew he wanted to win. He might not always try to do it the right way, but you could tell without question that he was an amazing competitor. Better run, boy. Defying convention, Brown would switch the undersized Iverson to shooting guard. You could hear and see and smell the cynics and the critics. Allen Iverson can't play two guard. Look at the size. He'll get murdered in the, in the matchups. Larry Brown was saying, guess what? The other team is going to have a whole lot more trouble with us than we're going to have with them. Brown was right. Allen into action, shakes to the right, gets two. Iverson, the backcourt cut. What a play by Allen Iverson as he wrapped it around the rim and twirled it home. Brown would get rid of every sixer he had inherited, except Allen, who he would build the team around, as he surrounded him with selfless role players. It was his basketball genius that really decided to give Allen enough range so he saw what he could do and what he would do. The rebound volleyball by Ori, but it's taken off over there by Davis. The wraparound pass behind the back, underneath, great play. What a play by Ivers. That's Allen Iverson at his pitch. 
I could see a change, a change for the better. I could see Allen inch by inch making progress. Six to shoot, Mark Jackson with the ball in the backcourt. Iverson knocked it away, and Smith's buying court. Allen, what a hustling play by Iverson, and a tremendous effort. I mean, fantastic. And the Sixers air McKee. With Iverson as their lone leading man, the Sixers began to reflect his personality. And they're on their feet. This house is rocking. And though Brown and Iverson didn't always see eye to eye, they began to make the Sixers better. In 1998, Philly won 31 games, and in 99, they became winners. The Stackhouse, and they stole the ball, and Keith took it away. Sixers down two, Iverson for the tie! Yeah! Wow! Oh, yes! During the 99 season, Iverson would be chosen as a first-team All-NBA player and lead the league in scoring. But more importantly, he would lead Philly back to the playoffs for the first time in seven years. And despite being an underdog in the first round against Orlando, Iverson was undaunted. Mama! You ready? Mark, 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 Mark you can't believe that. Oh, my God. You ready? That was crazy. Yeah, I'm ready. No, I'm ready. Man. I think it was the most exciting time I've ever been in an arena was that game three in Philadelphia. Allen came out on the court to the music and the passion of the fans that it was just so electrifying. Orlando never had a chance. Iverson splits the double. Yes! Oh, yes! That was like right up his alley. You know, the stage was set, roll the balls out and let's play. Iverson has seven steal tracked by Armstrong. Iverson now with eight steals. Make it nine. Nine. It's a playoff record. Cruises and solos for two. Allen Iverson, a playoff record, nine steals. A charged up Iverson would lead the Sixers to an upset victory that had the feeling of a revival meeting. I still remember this tingle to this day that it was so much fun to watch him lead that team and to close them out. And though his Sixers would lose to the Pacers in the next round, Allen's career continued to take off. And making his first All-Star appearance. In the 2000 season, he'd make the All-Star team for the first time. Allen that was like a, I mean, just like a dream come true. I always watched every All-Star game since I can remember. You know, I always wanted, had a feeling that those guys had. Here's Iverson from Carter. Count it plus the foul. It's something that I, you know, cherish for the rest of my life. I always remember. But in many ways, Allen's image still overshadowed his accomplishments. From his clothes to his tattoos to his cornrows, it all seemed like a do not disturb sign for the public. What I remember is Allen Iverson looking us in the eye and saying, I dress the way I dress. People are trying to get me to dress like Michael Jordan, like guys who are 30 and 35 years old. Maybe someday down the road, I will act like that, I will dress like that, I will talk like that, but not now. You know, I don't want to be Michael Jordan. I don't want to be Magic. I don't want to be Bird or Isaiah. I don't want to be any of those guys. You know, when my career is over, I'm going to look in the mirror and say, I did it my way. But his way wasn't the coach's way. Allen was angry when Larry subbed for him. And Brown was frustrated that Iverson didn't follow all of the team's rules. I saw two sensitive individuals, two headstrong individuals, two individuals with so much talent who knew what they could do and that they were almost the best at what they did. And when you have that mindset, let me do it my way. Coach Brown, let me do it my way, Allen Iverson. We don't white. We're not white. I was not trying to wait. I was not wait. I didn't know where the screen was at. You know, when you got two bulls and you put them in a cage together, someone is going to, something's going to happen. A breakup seemed inevitable. There were a lot of issues, and I didn't know if it ever could work. 
In the 2000 playoffs, the Sixers once again lost to Indiana. But this time, there were no moral victories. It seemed as if the relationship between Iverson and Brown had run its course. And though trade rumors began to swirl around him, Allen remained defiant. I'm still doing what I want to do. I'm playing on the team I want to play for. I'm trying to contribute, you know? I'm not hurt by that. I mean, I'm not hurt by that at all. Larry Brown and Allen Iverson had made the Sixers into a playoff team. But by the summer of 2000, it was evident that their partnership could no longer be a successful one. I've always had respect for him, you know. I didn't, didn't always like the things that he did, especially off the court and the way he approached our sport. Larry Brown did not want Allen Iverson on the Philadelphia 76ers when he was returning in that preseason. He just didn't want him because Allen did not obey his rules, his team rules, the promptness, the back talk, the strength training, things that he made public, very public. I'm tired of everybody talking about my relationship with Allen Iverson. I, I wonder what your relationship would be with any employee that you might have who doesn't choose to come to work on time or doesn't choose to come to work at all. Yeah, I was late for practice, but believe me, believe me, the times that I heard the stuff, I mean, nobody would put up with that. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not even brave enough to miss that many practices. Philly shopped Iverson around the league and thought they had him traded to Detroit. The only thing that prevented him from going to the Detroit Pistons uh, was Matt Geiger's refusal to waive his 15% trade kicker in his contract. Had Matt Geiger elected to waive that trade kicker, Allen Iverson would be a Detroit Piston today. It's just that simple. It was that close. For Allen, the prospect of leaving Philly finally hit home and hit hard. I always wanted to be a Sixer. My dad was a Sixer fan. And I always wanted to be the first pick. And I never wanted to leave Philadelphia. You know, I wanted to start my career as a Sixer and finish my career as a Sixer. And then for all that stuff to be going on, you know, it just, it felt bad. It was a bad time for me. All summer long, I didn't know. I woke up scared every morning, not knowing that I, you know, if I was at another team or not. Allen went on about how he changed, how he's 25 years old now, and he was going to be a professional. He wanted to be married. He wanted to be a captain, wanted to be a leader. I want to be right here where I'm at, where people love me, and I love these people. In this situation, I kind of knew why it was happening, and I had a lot to do with it, and I think that was a part of me just growing up, you know, and uh, the things that they told me that I, I had to take care of to make that thing work. I knew it was things that I could control and I could get a grip on. Brown and Iverson agreed to give it one more chance. The trade talks ended, and Allen was named team captain. This is going to be the most important year of, of my career because you know, all eyes on me this year. Everybody wants to see if I can be the captain, if I want, can be a leader, if I can be a professional, besides just playing basketball. And I'm up for the task. He came to me and said, Coach, I can change the things I have control over, the things you're upset about. When he made those kind of statements, I felt we had a chance. Iverson would embrace his role as team leader playing the way Brown had always envisioned for him. Philly opened the season with 10 straight wins. Backdoor pass, Iverson, twisting shot, and it counts. Iverson takes on all comers, count it, and a foul. He's a phenomenal player. Iverson putting against Ryder, here's the Ryder, comes in deep. Follow away, eight footer, good! What a show! Who now runs with Iverson? He's got Lou and he wants him. Yes! Clear out. Here is Iverson firing it up. Oh, and the basket counts! Allen Iverson! With each successive victory, Iverson seemed to grow as he and Brown finally found the common ground that had eluded them for so long. He now recognizes you've got to rely on somebody else. 
And it ain't always your teammates. You got to rely on your coach, too. You got to trust in the guy that's not on the court with you, but is on the sidelines with you, guiding you, orchestrating you, telling you to trust him and believe in him, and he'll take you there. He made me concentrate on some of the things that I never really paid attention to to become a better leader on and off the court. He fought with me, and I think that was important for me, you know. And now, then looking back on it, you know, I might have used to look at it like he's just on me for no reason. Ed! Ed! You know, he was trying to help me all along. Look. You've won for us before. Just keep playing the game. Catch and shoot. Forget it. You only need to play for four minutes. He helped me grow as a coach. He once told me he wanted to have a relationship with me that the great athletes have with their coaches. Our league. And at the All-Star Game, Brown and Iverson would put their new relationship on display. The way you play, I would just hope that we go out on the court and try to kick their ass, but try to do it playing the right way. Iverson would win the game's MVP, but more than his actions, it would be his words that would show how far he'd come. Where my coach? Where my coach? Coach Brown. Is he around? This, this is, you know, this is a tribute to Coach Brown, my teammates, my family, my friends. He goes up to accept the trophy and he asks for Larry Brown. Coach, where's my coach? It was like Rocky asking for Adrian. Philly fans had always loved Allen Iverson for the way he played. But now, they were embracing him for who he was. I think he melted the audience. All of a sudden, they started thinking, this isn't a bad guy. The kid's come a long, long way. You see the, you see the trouble he was in last year and uh, all, the, all the negative about him. This year, it's all positive. He's dedicated to winning. Whatever it takes, he'll do it. All our customers, that's all they talk about is Iverson. When they talk Sixers, it's, it's AI, and that's it. He truly is a fan favorite because not only his play on the court, but his interaction with them off the court. I think that's part of his success, his persona. Iverson Sixers finished the 2001 season with the best record in the East. But there was still skepticism as to whether Allen had the character to lead his team to playoff glory. And as fate would have it, Philly's opening round opponent in the postseason would be the Indiana Pacers, the team that had eliminated them the past two years. We felt like if we could beat Indiana, you know, then we could get to the finals. We felt like we could beat anybody, you know, because that team had our number for so many years. The first game would be hauntingly familiar to Philly. Playing on emotion, they got off to a big lead, but in the end, they couldn't sustain it. We're winning the entire game. Winning the entire game against the Pacers, Reggie Miller and the Pacers. Three seconds left to play. It's 78-76. Inbound the ball, Reggie comes off a screen, catches the ball behind that three-point arc, shoots. Miller, a break! Bang! Miller gives the Pacers the lead! Reggie Miller knocks it down, and this place is absolutely stunned. We lose by one point. It was awful. You got a big lead like that, and then to lose it at home in front of your own crowd, it was ridiculous. In the past, a loss like this would have unnerved the Sixers. But this year, they'd use it as a chance to show how far they'd come. I remember Allen in that locker room at that time. We got this. That's OK. We gave him this game. I remember him getting the team fired up after he was so angry, which was a great sign because they knew they deserved to win that game. And by gosh, we were going to win this series. Let's go, y'all. We got to get back on track, man. Yeah, all right. Uh, forget what just happened. Let's just, just go from here on out, all right? 48 strong. One, two, three. Play Play off. Off. Come on, baby. We at home, baby. Let's get down. But it would be Reggie Miller who would try to cut out Philly's heart as he dropped in 33 first-half points. Reggie Miller smoking. The Sixers desperately needed Allen to respond. And he did. Little slide of hand by Allen. 
goes behind the back and hits Allen Iverson. With their season hanging in the balance, Iverson attacked the Pacers with abandon and scored 45 points en route to a crucial Game 2 victory. Iverson for two. Yes! He has been stupendous. This is one of my most memorable. Um, did I say that right? How you say it? Memorable. Whatever, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I'm going to remember this game. <laughs> Indiana would never recover from Iverson's Game 2 scoring binge, and the Sixers had vanquished their old nemesis. Philadelphia has made the step, and they have eliminated the Indiana Pacers. Allen had passed the first test. These guys always haunted me and made it tough for me to sleep, so now I can rest for probably a day. Allen would need all the rest he could get if he was to keep up with the high-flying Vince Carter and the Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Vince was the clean-cut mainstream superstar that Iverson never would be. The dramatic setup was perfect, and from the start, the series would be a duel between the two stars. Iverson for two, and he got it! He's been the magic man! And predictably, Iverson was cast as the villain. Vince Carter says that the little guy can do it. Hey, I can do it. Wow. That's all I can say. Carter again for three. Man. Holy cow. Um, he can't him. miss. This is, this is unbelievable. It really is. Allen's dropping 54. Vince comes back and he's dropping 50. And it was one after another, one after another. It was like they were taking turns. But as the much smaller Iverson matched Carter by sheer force of will, the storyline began to change. Iverson for the lead! Yes! And as the team split the first four games, Iverson was making his most persuasive case for acceptance on his own terms. Allen Iverson has scored the Sixers' last 19 straight points. As the, the media gets larger and larger throughout the playoffs, I think he, he got into a lot of people's living rooms that didn't really know who he was. And man, I'm, I'm taller than that guy. I'm bigger than that guy. How, how does he do it against these monsters? Yes! 52 points for Iverson. He is the man! When you see the way people react to him, not only in Philly, but all over, it's kind of nice. You don't look at the tattoos or the cornrows. You just look at what's inside of them. I think it's the greatest story in sports. Before game five, the nation saw Iverson accept the league's MVP award. Every time I come in, every time I come in this gym, in this arena, I hear my favorite song. You know, y'all voices. So, um, it's time for y'all to play that song. Let's make this noise and get this party jumping. During game five, Iverson showed the nation why he was the MVP, scoring 52 points in a Sixer win. And he's got it again! Oh, my goodness! And the little guy, the MVP, trots to the sideline, asking for the fans, let me hear you! Alan, a lot of people affectionately refer to you as the little guy, but could you come up any bigger for your team than you did this evening? I hope I can. I always play with my heart. You know, I play with my heart first, you know, because I feel like that's all I got. All right, congratulations. Thanks for treating us to one of the all-time great playoff performers. Right, thanks, dude. But Vince Carter wasn't finished, and his 39 points led Toronto to a Game 6 win and set up a seventh and deciding game. Allen was ready. And then if you can't get going in this type of game, there's a problem, man. It's a war tonight. My baby going to battle. But Toronto was ready too, as they double teamed Allen and bullied him all over the court. Iverson went down so hard, he has a hurt back, and he is grimacing in pain. Hurt and tired, Iverson would now be forced to adjust. Allen, I must tell you again, when they double, you got to go into some kind of passing game. The ball has to move. Brown couldn't have drawn it up any better as Iverson foiled Toronto's plan by getting the ball to the open man. A 
across. A nice find by Allen Iverson, trusting his teammate. Weaving his way through defenders, Allen would hand out a career-high 16 assists. Great feed by Iverson. He's a passing machine. And fittingly, the series would come down to a final shot. Sixers by a point, 88-87. Here we go. Antonio Davis will screen. Curry will play in. Curry looking for Carter. Carter runs at the near side. He stops. He shoots. His shot is up. It's off the rim. And the Sixers advance to the Eastern Conference Finals as Vince Carter misses the shot. Iverson had outdueled Vince Carter on a national stage, and it wasn't hard to see how much had changed. The thing that I'm proud of him is learning how to play. He was a kid that was so competitive, wanted to play one against five every possession. And I just see his game developing. And he wants to win so badly. I'm learning a lot about him. Allen had seemingly given all of himself to beat Toronto. And there were serious questions about whether he could summon the strength to lead Philly past Milwaukee in the conference finals. Milwaukee's Ray Allen, Skywalker, underhand scoop by Ray Allen is good. As the team split the first two games, it was clear that Iverson was breaking down. He's hacked, fouled, <laughs> driven to ground, <laughs> takes another bruise. I'm telling you, the little guy, he is something. He takes a beating. Nobody else in this league would be playing and laying it on the line like he is. You know, the kid has an incredible heart, and he's trying to play through it, and it's just pretty difficult. <laughs> It's so as hell. Yeah, it, but, but only because I started cramping up real bad. Finally, he was forced to sit out game three. He could only watch as his teammates battled without him. And the game is tied as McKee drains the jumper on the right side. Well, you guys said they've got a lot of fun. They won't go away. But despite Philly's valiant effort, the Bucks grabbed the series lead. I just couldn't wait for the opportunity to get on the court with those guys again and just try to take my game to another level, just try to play just extra hard. Inspired by their performance, Iverson and his teammates would take two of the next three games and force another game seven. Snow with six to shoot, takes the outside jumper from the last control. Oh, my goodness. Jim, how about that with Eric Snow? Iverson, Eric Iverson was a game away from the finals and wasn't going to be denied. Allen Iverson exploding here at Game 7. With one more brilliant performance, the answer put to rest all questions about his leadership. Iverson shoots a long three at the third quarter. Buzzer! It's gone! He drilled a three! The MVP for three more! That game seven against Milwaukee was something that summed up Allen Iverson's not only five-year playing career, but I think his life. What you saw was this man who believed in himself so much that you had to believe in him. Iverson runs down the floor. He puts his hand to his ear. He jumps with joy. He had an unbelievable 44-point performance here in game seven. Reputations are made in the NBA playoffs, and Allen Iverson stamps his name in the annals of greatness. The 76ers are the Eastern Conference champions, and they're going to Tinsel Time. The Sixers beat the Bucks. Oh, yeah. Hey, yo, man. Y'all boys ain't no joke, man. I love y'all, man. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, that's a, that's a team, man. That's a team right there, baby. How you like LA? Love LA, man. That's where the stars at. That's where the stars are born. I heard that, but they it's born in Virginia too. When I met you, was like 17, man, young boy, shy. Now he's 26 years old. NBA MVP. Big man on campus. Allen's journey had taken him farther than he ever could have imagined. He had made it to the NBA Finals. 
and it was a celebration of everything he had accomplished. Happy birthday to you. Allen's ultimate wish of winning a championship would go unfulfilled. But even in defeat, he won the ultimate respect of everyone who watched him play. And he did it with the same heart and determination that had always driven him. Just to see his desire to win was something that I really marveled at. And and I've always appreciated this competitiveness, but I think that was really something special in my art. The way he's perceived nationally now is pretty special. You know, it's not like he's a renegade kid with talent that doesn't know how to be a team player. Now it's about a guy that everybody admires just because of his toughness and his character, and that's, that's what it's all about. After the season was over, I wanted to be able to look in the mirror and say, you did everything that everybody wanted you to do as far as being a leader. And you won the championship or you didn't, but you should be proud of yourself. And after the season was over, I was able to look in the mirror and feel good about everything that I did. The end of the 2001 season closed the door on one part of Allen's journey. But another part is just beginning. And as far as he's come from his earlier struggles, Alan is still only glimpsing the potential that lies ahead. When he says, there are a million people out there who love me and there are another million people who hate me, I think that was true at, at the beginning. When he says it now, I don't buy it. And the reason I don't buy it is that I believe that he is not only the most exciting player in the I think he's the most popular. Where are all those people who dislike him? Check out all the arenas around the country. Go check out how many Iverson jerseys you see. More of them than anyone. I've never seen anyone transform from the poster in the post office to the recommended poster in your bedroom. I mean, this was unbelievable. The baggage that this man had to carry, the questions that were asked his first second, third, even fourth year. And he transcends all that, and eventually he becomes truly the poster boy of the NBA. What don't kill you will make you stronger. And all of the things that he went through personally, off the court, all the things that he went, went through on the court is, has made him stronger as a person. He's still the same guy. He's still going out there playing hard and, and being Allen Iverson off the court but he's learning the do's and the don'ts and how to conduct himself. So I've watched him turn to a man over the years that I've been here. I remember in my neighborhood, I used to tell guys that I was gonna be a professional football player or basketball player, and they used to laugh, and, you know. I used to always say, you know, my mom said I can do anything I wanted, and that was kind of like a joke to them. But, you know, I'm not laughing at them now but now I'm the one doing the laughing. I'm Allen Iverson of the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm Allen Iverson. Welcome to my world, no. Um, what I gotta say? I'm the answer. You know me. Iverson, bumped by Brooks, no harm, no foul. What's up, man? How much time? Yeah. How much time? What's going on? I'm going to go to the team. Oh, yeah.
play by Allen Iverson. Trailing by 10 after one. Iverson oh, has been on fire since the start of the game. I'm not a hater, but the cake will say the block in my dough. The answer is in the building. Yeah. Who the hell is the answer? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the answer. I'm 